Well, good afternoon, and welcome to our uh, Lesson 3, Part 2 message. So um, we're going to start with prayer on page 53, where it says we pray for others, and uh, we'll do it together, me and my daughter. And uh, you can do it with um, your siblings or your parents as well. If you'd like to do it in Spanish, you can find the Spanish version on page 50, two pages before. All right, so um, Bridget, why don't you be leader okay. and um, you read the the even parts, and I'll read the uh, odd parts, and we will um, do the all together. Okay, sounds good. When we listen to Jesus, we learn how to love others. Let us show our love now by praying for the needs of everyone in the church. For all church leaders, especially the Pope, our Bishop, and our Pastor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all people who teach us about Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For everyone in our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For people who are poor and in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for First Holy Communion and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we love to listen to your word. Help us act on it every day. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you, Scooter, for joining us in prayer. Let us uh, finish our prayer by um, praying the Lord's Prayer or the Padre Nuestra. So if you don't know it, I will say a line, and, and then you can repeat it. Mm -hmm. I will do it in English, but you can also do it in Spanish, whatever you feel most comfortable with. So my, my daughter will um, repeat the line as we... And if you uh, don't know it yet by heart, you can look on page... 173 and 172 in the back of your book. So uh, let us conclude our beginning of our prayer with, with uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. All right. So, whether you said that in English or Spanish, um, the the Lord's Prayer is really a, a very simple prayer. It's it's based on uh, seven petitions. Where um, just we, we did intercessions before this when we did our when when we did our opening prayer of um, uh, just a minute ago called "We Pray for Others," and oftentimes we do that as called the prayers of the faithful at Mass. Um, petitions are sometimes what we pray for ourselves and what we need. And so the, the Our Father has seven petitions in it. And the first three are petitions that we ask for God's benefit. We ask them to hallow his name, make holy his name. Hallow is a fancy word for make holy your name. Um, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And then... The, uh, the last four petitions are petitions that we ask for ourselves. Give us this day our daily bread what we need to survive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and keep evil away from us. So those are all great things that we need for ourselves every day. All right, so um, let's go ahead and continue uh, our discussion with what we're talking about with... with um, listening and the importance of listening so I'll be right back all right welcome back to my side of the table all right so uh, we started talking at our last vi last video message about 
the importance of listening and, and God's word. We listened to a parable uh, from from our book, The Sower and the Seed. Um, and I also mentioned, I just want to reiterate what I mentioned last time, the importance of why we listen to God's word, especially when we go to Mass. And it, get, it got back to this idea that when we gather together as a group of people, we usually have some type of festive remembrance. Maybe we have a meal or a dessert or, or some type of food that we, we like to eat on special occasions, whether it's a birthday, like a birthday cake, or maybe it's um, those mom's famous enchiladas at Christmas or whatever it is. So, uh, but one of the things we do when we sit around the table is we tell stories. And those stories help ground us in who we are. By hearing the stories of our past, um, they tell us who we are as people, you know, where we came from, and hopefully where we're going. And we do the same thing when we go to Mass, when we listen to all those readings and the, those stories from the Old Testament, the New Testament, when we respond to the Psalm, um, and then hear how the priest um, preaches and tells us his homily of how we understand and apply it to our lives today. It helps us to know who we are as followers of Jesus. So that's the importance. That's why this is such an important part. I want to direct you to, to um, our screen here, and hopefully you can see that without any glare. But uh, there, there are five parts to the Mass. The Mass is divided into five main parts. The introductory rites, which we talked a little, about a little when we talked about gathering, all those things that happen from the opening song, the procession, the penitential rite, uh, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, and the Gloria, uh, um, and then when the priest goes, let us pray. All that stuff is called the introductory rites. Uh, it usually takes about five minutes, maybe seven minutes. But the two most important parts that take up the most time in the Mass are the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. So the Liturgy of the Word is kind of what we're talking about today. And this is where we, we listen and try to hear what God is trying to say to us. So... All right, so if you can remember, um, the last time you went to Mass, it's been a while for most people with the COVID, um, there are certain things that happen after that let us pray, and then everyone sits down, and then the first person gets up, a reader, and they usually read from the Old Testament. So um, that's the first part of the liturgy word. What's the second part? Can anyone remember? Hmm. Put your thinking caps on. All right. Usually, we have a, a cantor, someone that sings, that comes over, and sings a psalm. It's, a, it's from the uh, book of the Bible. There's a bunch of chapters in it, 100, 150 psalms. They usually sing one of those psalms, and it's a response. That as they sing a stanza, we then respond in song. After that responsorial psalm, there's a, another reading, reading from the New Testament. During the Easter season, it's often from the Acts of the Apostles, but, but during the rest of the year, it comes from the, uh, the letters of like St. Paul. Most of them are from St. Paul, but there's letters of John and letters of Peter and letter of James uh, that are also uh, sometimes called epistles or letters from uh, some of those great apostles of old. Then after that uh, letter, what comes next? Usually there's another brief song. We call it, there's a gospel acclamation. And usually it involves some type of Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And what happens when we hear the Hallelujah? Everyone pops up to their feet. So they uh, they stand and, and we stand because we're getting ready to hear the the story of Jesus his words his actions his teachings and since we're followers of Jesus this is one of the more important things uh, that we we uh, we want to listen to so we stand to hear it rather than just sitting all right so then we hear uh, either the priest or the deacon read from the 
uh, gospel of the day. It's followed by a, an explanation of all the readings that have come before uh, that the priest that the priest uh, preaches on, and it's called a homily, a little informal way of helping us understand it and how to apply it to our lives. Then after that, what happens after that? Usually they'll sit down for a little bit, but then we'll pop back up and we'll proclaim what we believe in either one of two creeds, the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed, and then finally, the prayers of the faithful. And that's what we kind of just did when we opened up our prayer today. We prayed for all those different people you know, in the world. And, and that is also part of what we call the Liturgy of the Word, how we both um, hear and listen, but also kind of respond to it. You know, either in the responsorial psalm or in the prayers of the faithful or the creed, uh, we, we respond to the word as it as it comes, and we believe as Catholics that when that word is proclaimed in the church, that uh, Christ is present in that word. So this is kind of an important belief for us. All right, so so um, um, all of that is part of our listening part of the liturgy of the word. And I'll be right back in just a second. Well, we're almost done. I just want to say one final word about this idea of listening to God. In addition to being an important part of the Mass when you go to worship God as a, as a community with your, with your parents and family, um, it's also an important way to pray. Uh, one of the ways that we pray, especially when we don't have Mass, is to read the Bible, read parts of the Bible, small parts, and and read them over aloud to ourselves a couple times. And it allows that listening to, to go from our ears into our head and down into our heart. So um, uh, that's an important way to listen every day. Now the final thing I want you to do for homework for, for next week is to not do, I'm not gonna have you do an activity from the book. What I want you to do instead is to um, look at the readings from last week, the gospel reading that we did on Sunday, which was from John. It, we, we said it was the body, the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. So I want you to look at the gospel of John. If you have your Bible at home, you can read it. Um, have your parents read it to you. It's chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. And what I'd like you to do is, just on a piece of paper, make a little picture whatever you however you want to picture it um so it, it talks about the 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 bread jesus is the bread come down from heaven and how they kind of um you know debated how can that be this bread come down from heaven and jesus was telling them what it meant so uh here's my little picture i just did really quickly there's jesus you know the bread come down from heaven and as we eat it and drink the his body and eat his blood uh we we have eternal life. We go back up to heaven. This bread comes down from heaven, and it's great. And these people, they say, oh, we're not going to eat the bread of heaven. They're dead. He says, hey, we're dying over here. We didn't eat the bread that gave us eternal life. You know, that's my quick picture. You know, you're probably much better artist than I am. But whatever you want to do from your reading of that, that story, uh, draw me a picture take a picture of it, have your parents take a picture of it, and send it to me. Make sure you send it to my email, askdonovan at cathedralofstandard.org. Um, don't text it to me. Well, if you text it, text it to my email, not, not to the text that you get your lesson from, all right? So I look forward to seeing your picture, and, uh, and continue praying, praying, and sharing your heart with God every day. Until next time. Have a have a blessed day.